Hello everyone. Happy Monday morning. For we Ohioans, we have more rain. <laughs> Which is not good for us with unfinished basements and and mold issues. So anyway, I wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about the symptoms and signs of SIRS or chronic inflammatory response syndrome. It is an exhaustive list um, and um, everything listed here is not even all the symptoms. Um, so it's, it's crazy what this can do to your body. I mean it basically hijacks every system in your body. Um, mold or biotoxins in general, which normally when you say biotoxins, you're talking about mold. Um, is, a, is a hormone disruptor. <laughs> My son is blowing his schnoz very loudly. Anywho, it is a hormone disruptor. Therefore, you know, it messes with your pituitary gland. It messes with your thyroid. It messes with your adrenals. Um, it messes with your brain. Um, when you're exposed to mold for um, too long, and even if you're not, <laughs> even if you're not genetically predisposed to mold. Um, you can still develop SIRS if you are um, have a little bit of a sensitivity to it and you are exposed for long periods of time. Now, my son and my husband do not have it. They don't have any symptoms. And I mean, if they do, they're, they're so um, vague that you really wouldn't put them in that category. Like, my son's always had allergies um, and exercise induced asthma now that he's working out consistently doing t25 um, and 10 minute trainer he's building up his lung capacity and um, he's not having those asthma issues anymore so I can probably say that his is not due to mold so um, so the generalized symptom of SIRS um, is you just don't feel good. You feel like like you have the flu. You don't sleep well at night. Um, you start noticing that you're uh, sensitive to multiple chemicals in general. Perfumes, candles, um, just different things in your environment. Um, like on a day like today, where it is, I mean, there's like no sunshine to be seen. I will go outside, I guarantee you, I will go outside today. I'll be like, I need my sunglasses, I need my sunglasses. Oh my land, the, sun, the, the light is too bright. And my family will look at me like I am, like I have lost my mind. And you know, my um, my husband will be like, there's no sun out, honey. But <laughs> it doesn't matter. Um, hypersensitivity to light and sound um, and even touch, you know, um, are, are pretty indicative of SIRS or mold illness. Um, so I'm going to go through all these symptoms that are listed on this website. And I am at www nihadc.com um, like I said it's an exhaustive list and this doesn't even cover it all so if you have like general malaise fatigue um, muscle achiness um, joint pain migraines dull headaches um, you know sensitivity to things around you um, panic attacks, things like that. Um, you probably should get tested. Probably should get tested. Um, there are 75 million to 100 million people that are predisposed 
to mold illness, and that number is climbing every year. It used to be about 22%, then it jumped to 25%, and now it's up as high as 28%. So, uh, of the U.S. population. I don't know about the world, but I would assume it's probably the same, but statistically in the United States, it's 25 to 28% of all people have the HLA genetic makeup to predispose them to SIRS or mold illness, okay? So, let's go over these symptoms and then break them up between you know what what um systems they disrupt so we are at ent symptoms or ear nose and throat symptoms okay and eyes as well i should because this will screw with your eyes <laughs> too because um it will it it shrinks your brain and it disrupts your your brain waves and and your nervous system I mean, it just hijacks every system in your body. So, um, the ENT symptoms, ear, eyes, ears, nose, and throat symptoms, blurred or hazy vision, eyes, sensitivity to light, ears, sensitivity to sound, eyes that tear easily, dry eyes, puffy dark circles below the eyes, night blindness, ringing in the ears, hearing loss, dizziness, sinus and nasal congestion, and I will add to that chronic sinusitis. Um, most of the time that's coming from a fungal infection. Nosebleeds, sensitivity to order, odors, vocal cord polyps, nasal polyps, laryngitis or raspy voice. You can hear my raspiness in my voice, and that's there almost all the time burning in the throat or sore throat and I will add to that swollen tonsils even though you don't have tonsillitis or struck throat or anything um, my tonsils swell all the time um, and it will swell and it will hurt from my ears like all the way down um, <clears throat> so and I added the dry eyes because my eyes are like and it's not just tearing easily it's like you want to claw your eyeballs out of your skull because they're so dry and red and it looks like you've been up drinking all night you know or you haven't slept in days okay <clears throat> so we're going on to the musculoskeletal system joint pain shooting pain ice pick sharp pain burning pain stabbing pain muscle cramps muscle aches muscle weakness, fleeting pain, pain that moves all around, ticks, like muscle spasms, charley horses, hands that curl up like a claw, toes and feet that curl up like a claw. My toes did that yesterday. It hurt so bad. Or maybe it was Saturday night. I kept telling my husband, oh, my feet, they're curled, like my two toes, my little pinky toe and the toe next to it. Um, just were curling and I could feel my foot like spasming and curling and nothing helps that. My husband was trying to massage my feet and there's just not a lot you can do about it. My fingers will curl and like move into weird positions and I can't move them until they decide, eh, I'm going to let up now. Um... And then morning stiffness. Um, I will add to that fibromyalgia, which a lot of that sounds like fibromyalgia. Um, osteoarthritis, rheumatoid arthritis, lupus, MS. Okay. All related to mold. All related to mold. Doesn't mean that that's what's going on because you have fibromyalgia, because you have MS or lupus. But it's worth checking out because if you can get rid of MS, if you can get rid of the lupus, if you can get rid of the fibromyalgia, or at least reduce the pain with it, why wouldn't you do that? Okay? Lung and heart symptoms. 
Yes, mold can cause you to have a heart attack. Okay. Shortness of breath, tachycardia, or a ha fast heart rate. I just did it. Now, you'll hear me a lot. Like, it's almost like I'm air hungry, like I'm gasping for breath. Like, you know, and I, you know, I'll talk on the phone and run out of breath. I can't breathe. And for the longest time, I had no idea why, and now I know why. Um, coughing, wheezing, asthma, swelling or edema, heart palpitations, heart pounds intermittently. Um, you can be misdiagnosed with COPD and actually have mold illness. Um, it's just crazy, crazy things that happen with this. But I think of any other heart symptoms, you know, I'm, I think of any, um, else I'll let you know. Digestive liver and urinary symptoms, metallic taste in your mouth. Bile reflux, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, constipation, abdominal pain, weight loss, weight gain, urinary frequency. Okay? And a lot of times what's happening, and, and I'll add to that, um, I don't know if it's on here somewhere, possibly, but um, dehydration, chronic dehydration. Um, what's happening is your, your endocrine system is malfunctioning because of the mold. And so it's storing all that fluid in your kidneys and it's never getting into your cells to rehydrate you. 